Welcome to You Brew Kombucha. This is your guide to picking the best bottles for good carbonation. Ever since I first started bottling kombucha, I was on the hunt to find the perfect bottle that would keep in that great carbonation that I worked so hard to build up in the bottle. And I tested quite a lot of options, as you can see. So I'm here to walk you through all the different types of bottles that have worked well for me and the pros and cons for each type of bottle. So you can see that I have a bunch of different clear glass options and some dark glass options as well. It's really up to you whether you wanna use clear glass or dark glass. The advantage of using dark bottles is that it lets less UV light from the sun filter through. So UV light has some antimicrobial properties which could hinder your fermentation process. But I don't really worry about it too much because when I do my second ferment, I keep my bottles in a dark cupboard anyhow, and then they go straight from there into the fridge. So I'm not really exposing it to a lot of sunlight, so it doesn't really matter whether I'm using dark glass or clear glass. And I prefer clear glass only because they look really nice. You can see exactly what's inside the bottle. And it's really helpful when you're opening up a bottle of kombucha for the first time and you're not sure how fizzy or how aggressive the bubbles are gonna be. You can really easily see how fast and how aggressive the bubbles are building up so you know whether you should open it slowly, whether you should open it over the sink, or take other steps to minimize that mess. A lot of home brewers like to use these flip top bottles. They're a really great option because they're fairly easy to find, fairly inexpensive, and they do a really great job of creating an airtight seal so that you're keeping as much of that carbonation in the bottle as possible. I really like them, but I find that they're a little hard to open, um, especially when they're new, and if you have have any types of joint problems like arthritis, you might have a really hard time opening these types of flip top bottles. Another great option for home brewers is reusing bottles that you've gotten from the store. If you've ever gotten a GT Synergy bottle, you probably recognize this type of bottle. Um, they work really, really well to hold in the carbonation as well. And same with these Health Aid bottles. I'm a really big fan of these other types of bottles that you see here. So this is a stout bottle, a Boston round bottle, and a ring neck bottle. Um, you can find these at a lot of wholesale bottle distributor supply stores. There are a lot of great ones online. You can find them in 16 ounce sizes, 12 ounce sizes, and I really like the fact that you can get a variety of sizes and a variety of shapes that suit your personal preference. I just happen to like these ones the best because they look really cool. Um, but they all work really well to keep that carbonation in and I haven't had a single one make a mess or explode on me. So I was talking a lot about how these are really great bottles for keeping in that carbonation that we know and love so well. But a lot of that isn't so much dependent on the bottle shape or the bottle size, it's dependent on the bottle cap and the liner that goes along with it. Bottle caps, super, super important topic. And the liners are really important as well. In my experience, I've found that the flip top bottles really do the best job of making an airtight seal. That can work for and against you in a lot of ways because they are they are a little bit more prone to getting over carbonated and making a fizzy mess. Aside from that, I haven't really noticed a stark difference or even a stark drop off in the quality of airtight seals between all of these non-flip top bottles. If you have any of these GT Synergy bottles lying around, reusing those caps are really, really great. Um, you'll notice that there's a liner, kind of a plastic liner on the inside. That's what really helps build up that great carbonation and make this as airtight of a seal as possible. The other two types of caps that I use are F217 caps and polycone seal caps. You might hear about polycone seals. They have kind of a conical plastic liner on the inside that's meant to make your bottles as airtight as possible. The F217 caps are more basic. You might not even notice that there's a liner inside, but it's basically a very thin foam liner sandwiched in between plastic. And there are a lot of people that say that polycone seals do a better job of holding in carbonation and making an airtight seal. Honestly, I haven't noticed a difference between them. And frankly, polycone seals are a lot more expensive than a basic F217 cap. So I prefer to go with the F217s only because they've worked so fantastically for me and I haven't found a need to use a polycone seal cap at all in any of my home brewing. Both the F217 cap and the polycone seal cap come in a range of sizes that'll fit a variety of bottlenecks. So for instance, with the stout bottle, I use a 38 by 400 size F217 cap, and it works perfectly and creates a nice tight seal. That same cap size 
the 38 by 400 also works as a reusable cap for a GT bottle that you may have lost a cap on or if you've misplaced it or broke it, that 38 by 400 is a really common versatile size. The other size that I like to use is the 28 by 400 and that works really well as a replacement cap for smaller neck bottles like this Boston Round and like this Health Aid bottle. And the 28 by 400 or 38 by 400 number is just a measure of the size of the cap itself and the type of thread that's on the inside of the cap. You do also have the option of using beer bottles and capping them with a bottle capper. But I do want to caution you that most glass beer bottles are not thick enough to withstand the CO2 pressure in kombucha. If you do decide to use beer bottles, don't ferment them at room temp for longer than a day, and make sure to do it in a closed cabinet or a cooler as a fail-safe against potential glass breaking. I have had a beer bottle break on me after I've left it second fermenting for a couple days too long over the summer. But reusing beer bottles is a great affordable option for people who want to flavor their kombucha after first fermentation but don't want carbonation. In that case, just add your flavoring and kombucha to the bottle, cap it, and put it straight into the fridge. Regardless of which type of bottle you end up deciding you want to use, you want to make sure that you are sealing it up as tightly as possible to make sure that the seals and the caps can actually do their job and keep the carbonation in. I like to use these really basic grippers just to make sure that I am twisting it on as tight as possible. I don't recommend using any bottles that are meant to be used for decorative purposes. So if you go to a garage sale and find some pretty colored glass bottles with a flip top and you think that you might be able to use it for kombucha, that might not necessarily be the case. There are a lot of really pretty flip top bottles that are just meant to be used as decoration and they're not pressure rated. They're not meant to hold liquids, let alone carbonated beverages. So I really recommend that you stay away from using those. Any cheaply made glass, um, not to diss Ikea, but the vast majority of stories that I've heard about glass exploding have been the result of someone using an Ikea bottle and thinking that it would be able to hold the carbonation that builds up in their kombucha. They don't work well. And I really, really wanted to be able to say that I could recommend mason jars as a good vessel for second fermentation, but I just haven't been able to get really good consistent carbonation buildup in my mason jars. So even if I've tried to heat up my seals before putting them on my mason jars and sealing them up tight, even if I've tried to make sure that they were as airtight as possible, I've had some mason jars be fizzy and some mason jars be completely flat. So I don't wanna live with that type of risk when it comes to kombucha, so I just prefer to go with the ones that have consistently provided really great carbonation for my kombucha. So you're probably wondering where I got my hands on these types of interestingly shaped bottles. So if you're in the market and want to purchase these types of bottles, just go online and search for a wholesale glass bottle distributor and you'll find a variety of options depending on your price point. They're really affordable, but in my experience, I've found that where they get you is with the shipping costs. So if you're ordering online and you think that you've found a really great steal on some cheap bottles, just make sure that you calculate the shipping costs as part of that total cost that you'll be paying for these bottles because you'll find that sometimes they're not that great of a deal when you factor in the cost of shipping. But a good option for you is if you know you live nearby a wholesale bottle distributor that's open to selling directly to the consumer, if they have a storeroom or if you if they have a number you can call, I recommend reaching out directly to them to see if you can pop in, see the bottles for yourself, maybe take home a few samples to try them out with your kombucha before you commit to buying a large order. And if you do have one somewhere near you, you can go in, place your order and pick it up directly so you don't even need to worry about the shipping costs. That's what I did to get these bottles and it ended up saving me a ton of money. So if you're serious about home brewing, I strongly recommend that you look into getting some high quality glass bottles for you to use during your own brewing process. So I hope this gives you a good range of options to pick from depending on your needs when it comes to bottling your kombucha. If you have any questions or if you want more details, make sure you go to youbrewkombucha.com. Happy brewing!